Hello there and welcome back to Chemist Tea Time. Today's discussion will be focusing on atoms. We're going to take a closer look at early atomic theory, some important experiments that helped us determine its structure, and how this has shaped our modern understanding of the atom. Before we can begin our conversation, I want to make sure everyone is on the same page with some important definitions. Atoms are the smallest quantity of matter that retain the properties of matter whereas elements are made up of a single type of atom, such as iron or helium, and consist of atoms with the same number of protons in their nucleus. Some elements are diatomic, meaning that in their elemental form they exist as pairs of atoms. These elements include bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. You can remember these diatomic elements using the mnemonic Brinkelhoff, which is the sound of the chemical symbols for these elements. It is important to note that since these diatomic species contain only one type of atom each, they are still considered elements. One of the first theories regarding atomic structures was proposed by John Dalton in 1808. Dalton's atomic theory could be broken down into four main parts. First, all matter was made of atoms, which are tiny indivisible particles that could not be created or destroyed. Second, atoms of one element could not be directly converted into another element, and that chemical reactions were the result of atoms of different elements breaking apart and recombining in different ways. Third, atoms that make up each element have a unique mass and other properties that are not shared by any other elements. Finally, chemical compounds result from the combination of atoms of different elements in different ratios. Although Dalton's theory was able to explain a number of phenomena about elements and substances, it still did not explain the structure of the atom or why different elements had different chemical and physical properties. Our modern understanding of the atom is mostly based on several key experiments. Some of the first experiments to give us clues as to the structure of the atoms came from cathode ray tubes. These tubes consisted of a glass tube with two obsolete charged plates and were under vacuum. When electricity was flowed through the tube, it produced a beam of particles that moved from the negative plate, known as a cathode, to the positive plate, known as the anode, and would produce a dot on a fluorescent surface. These tubes are actually what early TVs used to create a picture. When a magnetic field was applied to these tubes, the beam of particles would bend toward the positive end of the field. These particles later be became known as electrons and were shown to have a negative charge. These experiments were some of the first to show the presence of charged particles that existed as part of the atom. The presence of these charges within the atom led scientists to believe that atoms consisted of electrons floating in a sea of positive charge. This model was developed by J.J. Thompson and was referred to as the plum pudding model. The next step in our understanding of the structure of the atom came from an experiment performed by Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford performed what was called the gold foil experiment, where a sheet of extremely thin gold foil was bombarded with a beam of positively charged alpha particles. The foil was mostly surrounded by a screen that allowed them to observe whether the particles were deflected or went straight through. This led to two very important observations. Firstly, most of the particles that hit the gold foil went straight through and hit the screen on the opposite side. This indicated that most of the atom was made up of empty space, which allowed the particles to pass through. The second, more important observation was that some of the particles deflected, sometimes almost completely back to the source, indicating the presence of a concentrated area of the atom where most of the mass was contained, known as the nucleus. This contradicted J.J. Thompson's model of the atom. These experiments, along with many others, have helped shape a modern day understanding of the structure of the atom. We know that atoms are comprised of a nucleus, which contains positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. In this area, it takes up an extremely small fraction of the atom's volume, but comprises nearly of all of the atom's mass. The nucleus is surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons, which have much less mass than protons and neutrons. Protons and electrons have equal magnitude of charges, but opposite, opposite signs in a neutral atom will have the same number of protons and electrons, resulting in a neutral charge. Hopefully today's discussion gave you some insight into our understanding of atomic structure. We began by discussing early atomic theory, as well as some important experiments and observations on subatomic particles. Finally, we looked at the modern theory of the atomic structure and how it builds on these early experiments. Join us next time for more Chemist Tea Time, and have a wonderful day. Chemist Tea Time.